Welcome, we are so glad that you joined us this morning. Hi, it's great to be with you here on Church Online. What a privilege it is to have the babe with me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't often get a chance to do things together, but um, this message was actually V's idea, so I thought, well, it's good to make a part of it. So before we get into the message, let's just open in prayer quickly. Lord, thank you that this morning you're going to speak to us. Thank you that our ears will be open to hear. Thank you that we're going to be challenged, but more than challenged, Lord, we will take what we hear and we'll go apply it to our life. May our lives, Lord, just glorify you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so like I said, the topic is V's topic. Um, I think it's something we should have spoken about long ago, but we're going to get into it this way. Now, I want you to imagine for a minute that the salvation of the whole world depended on you. Everyone was looking to you to see if they would follow Jesus. Now, that's a tremendous amount of pressure. Imagine how close, though, you would feel you need to live to Jesus and how close you would desire to live to Jesus so you don't disappoint him and you also encourage others to follow him. Well, guess what? That is the case. People are looking at you and they're looking at me and they are going to determine whether they follow Jesus or not by what they see in us. In fact, some people are even going to, going to see if they are going to follow Jesus just like you do. Now, what did I just say? Just like you do. So you've got to ask yourself a question. If people are watching me and they do what I do and they talk the way I talk, would they end up in heaven? There's a very good way of measuring where you are in Christ. Now, the truth is that, like we said, people are watching us. They, um, and they're going to decide the way we live, the way we live out our belief, whether they're going to accept this belief or not. And they need to see that there's been a difference in our lives before they allow the difference to come upon their life. Now, the Apostle Peter, he, he addressed this issue. And he speaks to us in 1 Peter 2.12. Um, he's saying to us basically, listen here, listen up. People are watching you. They're watching everything you do. And it says there, conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles, so that in, in a case where they speak against you as those who do evil, they may, by observing your good works, glorify God in a day of visitation. See, people are watching you. People are not. And it's, when, when it talks about watching, it's not like just a passing glance. Okay, I see this person. They're looking at you intently, especially when you've declared yourself to be a believer. So what do they watch? Well, there's a number of things people are looking to. And the first one is they want to see if our behavior matches our belief. If our walk matches our talk and if our character matches our confession they want to see if what we show on a sunday do we live it out on a monday you know what they're looking for they're looking for this one word integrity integrity is the hallmark of a christian of the christian faith now v i want to ask you because this was your idea. And how would you describe integrity? Okay. I'm going to take you back a, a few years without giving too much of my age away. I don't know if a lot of you remember a TV program, a sitcom, remembered, uh, remembering um, Major Dad. This was a program of a guy who was a, a soldier and he had taken, married in a family, an uh, extended family. And w when Paul asked me this question, that is the first picture that came to mind. And maybe the way I grew up in, in a military family, th the picture of a Marine in a uniform 
with his straight ironed pants and his boned shoes you know that you could actually see your face in his shoes and his white gloves with not a speck of dust on them and his ironed shirt and his straight tie and all his buttons are sparkling this image of perfection this image of you could draw him through a ring but just the image who knows what goes on in their lives but that is the image of integrity to me awesome I come out the military and I was never that guy. <laughs> I don't know how I hooked her, but somehow must have been charm and good looks. That Who knows? The rebellious <laughs> side of you. <laughs> okay, so that is, that is your vision of um, integrity. Um, it is someone, in other words, who looks the part. Yes. Okay? But you've got to act the part as well. So mm -hmm. this is my next question. Why is integrity so important to you and why do you think it's important to God? Because first of all, and you, you, I mean, you can go and have a look at my WhatsApp status. It says, integrity, integrity is its own reward. Now that opens itself to a whole new topic as well. But we serve a righteous God. We accept his laws, his love, his grace. And he's a God of integrity. So hmm. if, if we confess to believe in him and we confess to love him, how can we not live or strive to live our lives with integrity? Yeah. In other words, live a life that always honors God. Exactly. Awesome. So there you have it, literally from the horse's mouth. I'm not calling her a oh, horse. Oh, my but word. <laughs> <laughs> from, the, from the concept of this idea, you've now heard what integrity is, and now unfortunately you're going to have to make do with me for the rest of this message. Thank you. Mwah. Love you. <laughs> enjoy. Bye, I will everyone. Enjoy. <laughs> okay, so now you've heard from V. I just want to follow up with this quote by Rick Izal. And it says, integrity is a high standard of living based on a personal code of morality that doesn't succumb to the whim of the, whim of the moment or the dictates of the majority. In other words, integrity, to people who are like this, integrity means it's okay if others are watching. I don't mind. I've got nothing to hide. I've got nothing to fear. You can look at my life and I think we all need to get to that point you know Solomon wrote in Proverbs 10 9 the one who lives with integrity lives securely wow wouldn't that be amazing if we could all just love live with the security of knowing it's okay if other people are watching there's no pressure on us to perform then um, we can just say look yeah my life's an open book go ahead have a look my behavior will match my beliefs, my walk will match my talk, uh, my character will match my confession. You know what, what you see on a Sunday, you're going to see on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday. That is how we should be able to live. But we've got to build up to that. You see, I think there's, there's this misconception that only a certain class or 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 type of person can live like this and some people disqualify themselves because of their lack the economic lack maybe or maybe because of their past or maybe because of their looks but you know all of that really doesn't matter if you take a, a hundred rand note for argument's sake and you crumple it up and you rub dirt on it and you jump on it you know what it's still a hundred rand note it still has value and so you, despite your background, despite what you might think because you don't have the possessions or you don't have the, the charisma of someone else, you still got value and as long as you got value, you can have a character trait called integrity. Um, it doesn't matter how scarred or beaten or bruised you are, you can become a person of integrity. Uh, John Maxwell said, 
deciding to integrate my integrity to in sorry, um, let me start that again. Deciding to integrate my heart's value into my daily actions. You know what John Maxwell is saying? It's a decision we, 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 we take to match what is in here with everything that we do and say out there. And that doesn't take anything other than having good moral standards based on the Word of God and living it out. Now I was reading an article by Bill Purvis and he wrote, um, he wrote, a, he wrote the article for CBN, the Christian Broadcast Network, describing integrity and character and how the one strengthens the other. And he named three points in there that I'd like to just to highlight. And the first one is, we need to strive to be the same person in front of the crowd as we are behind the scenes. You know what? As much as what we we try to to be something else in front of other people, what's inside always comes out, always. And especially if you're under crisis or under stress, we are very quickly we're going to see the real you. And as a believer, you know what? We don't. We shouldn't be having to keep up a pretense. We don't have the, the luxury of, of, of having a false appearance. We've got to be real, we've got to be authentic because our actions are going to reveal who we actually are and it's going to be for good or for bad depending on what you decide today. You see, the person you are outside of work the person you are in your home, that's who you really are. Not the person that you put on when you enter into a certain group of people um, or when you're in with a, a certain car, then your speech changes and this and that. Integrity means you're consistent in your behavior and people who value integrity don't change from group to group or place to place they are always the same popularity to them isn't isn't all that important being credible regardless of the setting that is what matters and you can only do this if you have integrity and like we said, people are watching. You know who's watching? Your co-workers, your, your family, um, your friends, your husband or your wife or your children. They're all watching you to see if your words and your actions align. What message are you sending? Man, are we being consistent? Or are we confusing other people about who we actually are? My, my mother like drummed this into us, the importance of being true to who you are, but being willing to improve who you've become. And it's something I've only thought about in later years, you know. Um, I'm not who I've become. I can get better. I can develop my integrity, my character, because Character and integrity should, should support my success. Me displaying the right things and taking the right choices despite who's watching counts for a whole lot. And being faithful to God in my private life becomes just as important as me accurately representing Him in my public life. You see, I'm able to not only become more, but I'm able to display more of God in the small things and in the big things. So I'm the same. I need to be the same wherever I am because that will point people to God or away from Him. The second point is this. Be very careful not to conform. Your character isn't 
who you say you are. It's who you really are. So you can put up a pretense as much as you want. You can fake almost anything in life, but you can't fake good character. You either have it or you don't have it, and you're either going to stand up and sometimes stand alone and sometimes stand courageously, or you're going to flop around like the rest of the world. It's not something that you can put on and take off. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world. We know this. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will. And you know when it says do not conform, let's be honest, sometimes it's easier just to conform. Especially when maybe the stakes aren't that high or, or the outcome isn't that important or it's going to have really have very little impact. Sometimes it's just easier to go with the flow. Let's say you, you're in a staff meeting and you're working on a project and the the team you're with is going in a certain direction but you don't agree you know sometimes it's easier just to keep quiet because you don't want to be seen as the one who's difficult or the one who's like always raising an objection but if you know if you've got integrity and character you're going to say but this is wrong we can't do it that way or well, let's say you're standing with a bunch of people and they're discussing someone else. You know what's the easy thing? Just to stand and keep quiet. Hopefully you're not participating in gossip. But that's the easy way out. You know the difficult way out is to say what you're doing is wrong. Why don't we ask that person to come here? Or you know what, you're completely off the mark. This is the truth. You see, we, we need to be displaying character, integrity in all circumstances and we must be willing not to conform. We have to be willing to stand out sometimes. How many how many people do you know that when they speak you're like, ah man, I just don't know. I doubt what this guy is saying or this girl is saying. You know what that means? That means that person doesn't really have integrity. You've got to be cautious when, when, when people are talking themselves up, but the actions show something else. And often we get caught doing this because we want to be liked, we want to be impressed. So we speak ourselves up and we say things about ourselves that is not true. That is not integrity. You need to be the same person wherever you are, it doesn't matter who you're around, and it doesn't really matter what they think about you. What matters is what God thinks, because God is watching. We're gonna look at that now, now. Now, moving along, number three. Let's, I just want to say something back on point number two about conforming. When people speak themselves up, it's often a sign of them faking their character. And like I said, we need to be cautious of that, that we don't fake our character. We've got to be, we've got to be more than our words. So we've got to live higher than that what we are talking. We've got to be a person of action so that our reputation speaks for us. Okay, develop a reputation that people know you are trustworthy. Let's get to point three now. Learn to value the process of building character. Okay, just stick with me. I'm going to read Romans 5 verse 3 to 5 and it says, More than that, we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Do you know what they're saying? That character is developed 
through endurance. It's like, you know what, if you want to partake in a marathon, you got to train. If you want to develop muscles, you got to go to the gym. And you can't just go to the gym and check out the other people. You got to actually pump some iron. It is in the enduring, in the training, that's going to produce the results. And we've got to do the same with our character because you can't just go to a drive through and order it. Okay, It's something that needs to be developed. You can't tell others, I've got it, because you first have to build on it. Um, you, 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 you have to work at it and you have to put it into practice to make it grow. It is not... And one, once you have it, it's not something that you can put on and take off, okay? So you've worked for it, you've got it, now you've got to live it. And sometimes, you know what, we walk into a room because there's certain people and it's a certain atmosphere, so we put our, our character down at the door thinking we can just put it up, pick it up when we walk out. No, you know what, you actually don't have anything to put down. Because character is something who you are, it's something that you, who you've become and you that person all the time. In this fast-paced world where you know things are instant, we think character is the same. Man, you're not going to pull up to a McDonald's drive-thru or a Burger King and lean out your door. Okay, it's actually this side in South Africa and say, whoa, give me an order of integrity please I need to up my character it doesn't work like that it's not like you can go on to YouTube or whatever and download a song it doesn't work like that it's something that you have to work at and you got to it's hard work and you got to be consistent at it if you want heaven's rewards you know what we, we, we all want God to bless us and but he can't bless us with big things if he can't trust us with the small things like developing our integrity and our character. And once you got it, you know what? People with integrity seem to rise to the top. Others may get there quicker, but they can never stay there. People with integrity rise to the top. It takes them longer, but once they're there, they continue to go higher because people are looking for this seriously lacking trait in leaders and in believers. So if you want to climb socially, if you want to climb in your workplace, develop integrity, but don't do it for the sake of climbing. Do it because you want to represent God more accurately on earth. Be Become more than words. Become action. Let people see that you're a man or a woman of your word. Your yes is yes, your no is no, and your actions meet your speech. What you say, what you talk, is what you walk. What you believe, they are able to receive. So, I'm getting so far ahead of myself and off my notes here, but we're going we're gonna to start wrapping this up. But you see, the problem is that with integrity, we think it's only something that other people see. And they do. And it's important. They're watching how we act, how we react, how we respond to things, um, how we portray Jesus, how we adhere to the instructions of the Bible. They're watching all of these things. But get this, this is a kicker. God is also watching. And we've slipped into this false perception that God only sees what we declare. And that is the biggest untruth. It's a lie of the devil. God sees everything. You see, the people out there only see you out there. God sees you in action all the time in every area of your life. He, he, he knows what happens behind closed doors. He knows how you deal with, with the domestic or how you deal with your husband or your wife 
or with your children. He knows if you're discussing other people. He knows if you are doing things outside of his will. God knows all of these things. And we've got to have a, a, a we've got to have integrity and character developed that honors God in all aspects. So the fact that God is watching doesn't matter either. In fact, we are honored that God is watching us because it's a blessing to know that his eyes are on us. So we act righteously in all circumstances. We, we, we become who we tell other people we are because who we are in private is who we are in public. Paul Purvis, same guy, gave us three points. He wrote this, he said, God is not looking for an incredible person to use for his purposes. He's looking for a credible one. And that is what integrity is. It's about becoming credible. You know, your talents, your skills, your possessions, your charisma, those things matter for nothing. What matters is your character. Can your word be trusted? Is the way you, you walk and you talk the same? Are you walking and talking in a manner that honors God and glorifies the kingdom, that builds other people up, that doesn't break them down? You know what? This comes, this sort of lifestyle comes from intimacy with God and a willingness to live life like the Lord Jesus Christ did. You might have natural good morals. Man, because some people are just wired that way. Some people need to develop it. But irrespective, we need to build on what we got or what we don't have. And that is building on integrity, developing our character so our life honors God. Because integrity matters. You know what? It shows the world where your heart is and it tells the people who has your heart. Let me pray for you. Lord, we just thank you that in this talk on integrity, our hearts have been stirred. And my prayer is, Lord, that we are stirred to action, that people who have, are listening, or who will listen, will be convicted, Lord, of the areas in their life where they don't show integrity, where their character is weak, and that you will enable us, Lord, to develop to become people who can be trusted, people who are valued, and people, Lord, who accurately represent you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing this to happen, making it possible to happen, Lord, and thank you for walking with us until we are who you called us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. Thank you for sharing. And I just want to honor those of you who have been sowing into this ministry. Um, man, you can go onto our website for the details. You know, that's life. Life to spread the word of God. We need the help of the people. So, APSA 405-1911-270. Sow into something that is giving life to others. May you be blessed. We love you. See you next week online, hopefully pretty soon in person.